Hello, everybody. Happy Thursday afternoon. You're here live with, I'm Tom Matuska, and thank goodness Mandy is back, and I'm sure all of you guys appreciate it too. We're with Matuska Tax Fairmay Supply Company, Thursday afternoon live, and uh, we've been on the struggle bus since you guys have been you doing decided awesome. to have babies. Um, Baby. Thank you, goodness, for Caitlin because she's been carrying us along yeah. as we've been going. Um, the last few weeks, I think, is this like number four or five so. on the Bobcat? Um, we got to get this Bobcat done sooner or later because we've been working on him for a long time. Um, anyway, uh, we started out altering the form for the Bobcat. Um, we uh, reinforced the legs. We set the eyes for you. We showed you how to set the ears. Um, the way we put the ears on that is last week is much like we do on our whitetail. At least we um, show the students how to build ear muscle um, rather than just put a ball of clay in the, in the sack of the ear. And um, if you learn how to do it this way first, then when you start kind of just filling the ear sack with clay, um, you'll do that much more accurately and you'll be kind of conscious of where there should be valleys and where there should be muscle groups bulging and things like that. So uh, this is kind of the same way we do it on the uh, um, deer and any of our animals. Uh, once you get uh, your animal into a pose, this customer wanted, wanted this bobcat climbing up. He wanted some curve to the body. We've actually got quite a bit of curve. I don't think you can see it from the front, but if we turn it from the end, he's, his uh, back end is wrapped around a little bit. <clears throat> and he's climbing up, he's gonna be in a table, he wants him in a glass case. Um, so there's quite a bit of alteration to that. Um, I think uh, Amber cut that apart and chopped and put it together. And, and anytime you do alterations, start out small. Don't try to take an animal and, and cut all the legs off and move everything. Uh, maybe start with one foot. Take something simple, turn the head to the right instead of the left. Turn the, put a little curve in the body um, sometimes until you beat your confidence up. And then um, you can get into more drastic um, alterations. And before long, you're gonna be a natural at changing posture and attitudes. And it's just because you started out little, built up your confidence, and all of a sudden you're um, a master at Alterations. Alterations are not hard. They just take a little bit of confidence and common sense when you're doing them. If I, if you need to interrupt me, you just go right ahead. No, oh, you're doing good. I was wondering though, how much of this is artificial driftwood? Oh, a lot of that how is artificial. And we used to spend hours and hours and hours out in the wood pile trying to find a piece of branch that would conform to all the feet, or another branch that we could um, screw on and make it work. Um, we kind of learned that uh, we needed something here for this foot to, to rest on, and we could add, we could, we could have put a rock there, we could have put um, a mound of dirt with some gravel there, we could do all kinds of things. Um, but so which is the reel, just to show you? Um, really, the only part of the reel is this right here. This is artificial because that foot was hanging off into space. This piece looks real. Um, you gotta get close to tell. This piece is real right here. This piece is not. This piece is not. Um, and part of this is. So you get real good. All you're gonna do is copy, you know, just use this as something to go by, uh, match that color, put some striations in it. A lot of this is auto body putty. You can use machés or auto body putties, but uh, don't be afraid if, if this foot's hanging out here and you need something for it to rest on that looks nice, that doesn't look like you stuck a you know, tomato on a vine for him resting on or something like that, um, don't be afraid to try one. If it doesn't look good, knock it off and, and build it again. And what'd you build it with? Uh, it's kind of foam, in, it's mostly foam inside of here and auto body putty works good. We use auto body putty and we use tools like, um, oh, I don't know, any of those little modeling tools that come in those sets. You know, things like this to make your striations. Um, one of my favorites, and I keep telling people this at the show, we were at the National Tax Army show, and there was a lady, there was a lady that was looking at these, these bamboo to tools, and um, she thinks I was lying to her, but I said, that is like the 
my most favorite tool in my box. It's nothing more than a pointed bamboo stick on each end. I can't do tax for me without it. Um, you can work all around those acrylic eyes without scratching them. Um, you can do so much stuff with them and they're super strong and you lose them, they, nothing will happen to them. Uh, but anyway, that works good to make striations. Maybe we should throw that in with your giveaway that you're talking about. Um, it's kind of funny because I know she thinks I was lying to her trying to sell her a <laughs> stick. But it is a, it is a good thing. Um, and then take a brush in your auto body putty and you can color your auto body putty too. Um, we refer to auto body putty a lot as Bondo around here because Bondo is a brand of auto body putty. Bondo works well. Um, but you can dip a, a paintbrush in lacquer thinner and you can soften all your gouges um, and then just kind of paint it. Um, this, if you can tell the fake from the real, um, don't be afraid to put some mosses in here, some grasses coming up, a little bit of lichen if you want, all different ways that you can um, make this look like the real thing. So, um, Rick Hammond says, happy taxidermy Thursday. Happy taxidermy It's amazing how many of you people don't have real jobs. If anybody's at the Missouri <laughs> show, if anybody's at the Missouri show and you see Cole or Brett, you tell them to answer my text. I can tell they saw it because it says red. So, oh, really? So they're ignoring me on purpose. I'm sure they're really busy setting up, but really? oh, just that's saying. <laughs> Uh, so you get caught by looking at it? Yeah. Do you have your red notification? Did you know that? I did. Yeah. I have mine off, so you can't tell if I'm ignoring you or not, but Brett and Cole, I can tell you're ignoring you. Um, yeah. So, get over that Missouri show. It's always a good show. Yep. And if you're there, we did not make it for a booth this year, but I have pretty much promised Cole next year. But if you're there, we do are making up for us not being there. So go find Cole or Brett to see what we're doing for that. So hunt them down and talk to them about what you can get from us for us missing it. Looks like Sarah DeJournette says, hey guys, thanks again for all you, your willingness to be better at us as an industry. Thanks, thank you, Sarah. thank you. Um, it's fun showing, you know, it's hard because our viewers consist of people who want to do taxidermy, mm -hmm. people who have dabbled in taxidermy, as well as people who have done this for 50 years. So we have, um, we're kind of showing the same thing to, I mean like masters of masters all the way down to somebody that thinks, man, I'd like to try that. So we have a really broad spectrum and uh, some people are fascinated by something we show and some people think, you know, that's- You're doing that way wrong. <laughs> yeah, we, yeah we, do, <laughs> we do a lot of stuff way wrong, but we make it work. Uh, okay, so, you got your bobcat or whatever animal. This this applies to absolutely everything. I don't think anything that we've done on this this has um, is any different whether it's a badger or a life-size deer or a bear or whatever it happens to be. The one thing that's important to me is I really like to have my base and my stance of my animal done before I mount it. I don't need all the flowers and the bushes and the grasses put on or all the rocks, but I, I do want him leveled up. I want his attitude and his focus where I designed it to be. Um, and I want him nice and sturdy. The one thing that doesn't work is to, and we find this with birds all the time, especially when we're teaching students. We have students that mount some pretty nice birds and they get them all sewed up and now they say, hmm, wonder what I'm gonna put him on. And to me, that's a disaster. The bird's gonna go downhill from there. Not everybody I mean some people can make that work but have have the basic um, I could make this bigger I could make it smaller but what I don't want to change is this this that that and his focus <clears throat> also I think I mentioned to you the other day um, if you're say doing a mountain lion or maybe a bear that's going on a wall or a leopard or something like that um, I always try to find out the size of the room I try to find out the main activity of the room and when I get the mannequin ready, I like to hang it at the height the customer is gonna put it so that, so that that animal isn't looking over the viewer or looking at his feet. You know, you can really... Um, it's like cereal boxes. Do you notice walking through the aisles, they're all staring at you? Cereal boxes. Yeah, the, the cartoon, the animals on cereal boxes. No. They do that, it's marketing, marketing. <laughs> it's a real thing. I'll check that out. Mm-hmm. Tony the Tiger scares me sometimes. Yep. <laughs> um, 
Okay, once you're to this step, um, at some point you better test fitting. And I don't want, I want my test fit to be perfect. I oftentimes will test fit something like this. Oh man, two, three, four, five times, you know. Um, if I have to alter something, if I have to take his belly down, I'm gonna do it to what I think I need. I'm gonna test fit him again. Um, if I need him longer, shorter, whatever it happens to be. And you should have real good measurements because you were probably the person that skinned this animal and make sure you fill out those measurement sheets. They'll be invaluable to you um, when you go to mount or making this fit your skin. So make sure you got good measurements and then make sure that he fits. You don't want to get the face all done, um, start putting his paws on and all of a sudden one paw doesn't reach because um, something's off or his tail hangs down on the base um, because you made him way too short. So test fitting is critical before you start the mounting process. It took me a long time to learn that. Um, then, once, when I first started, we had paper forms. They were hollow, they were red rosin paper, and foam wasn't invented. We didn't have foam. So, I had a life-size mule deer that I had shot, and it was a little bitty fork horn that I thought was pretty big when I got him. And I ordered a form from Jonas Brothers. They had like three of them. And I got this form and I test fit him and he wasn't very close, but I thought I would get him closer as I, as I go and I never did. And I ended up having a big old gap, you know, right down the middle of my mule deer. So there's no way to fix that. I figured I would glue some hair in or something. That didn't work very good. I sold him to the DNR for a decoy. <laughs> uh, okay, once you have him, position. You have cut those legs all to pieces and uh, somehow you're going to want to reinforce them because the foam that you patched with and filled them in with is not under pressure. So it's not near as strong as the foam that came from the supply company. So you're going to want to reinforce him, especially in the, in the legs if you cut those apart, um, through the head if you cut those apart. And there's lots of different ways to do that. Everybody will have a, a different method of doing that. If it were a, uh, say a, a bighorn sheep full shoulder mount and you turn the head maybe to the left and so you cut that a couple times or three or four times and those sheep horns are very, very heavy compared to a white tail, um, you need a pretty good, pretty good um, reinforcement down through there. Something that works good is right through the forehead of the sheep, you can take a spade bit, use an extension have a dowel rod, drill right down through the forehead, down into the shoulder, clean it out with your air, air nozzle. Make sure that you have room for a, a dowel rod on something like that. I'd probably use, I don't know, this must be, this is probably an inch. I probably want an inch and an eighth spade bit with an inch dowel. Then I would pour auto body putty down my hole, push this all the way down. As it oozes out, I would let it gel, trim it off, sand it, and you have something like this bottled up in. And you can use it on, you can use a little, little dowel rod down in here, or you could use thread and ready rod, but somehow you're gonna wanna reinforce that. Um, something else we do um, oftentimes is we'll take a, a bigger piece of ready rod and we'll sharpen it on the sander so you've got a chisel tip right here and I took a, a little hacksaw and I made a little slot in it up here and just to show you how easily that works if you and then I have a just a flat screwdriver tip here to show you how easily that works I'll just go into this mannequin here. And you can sink it below the surface, a little bit of clay, and I just reinforced that with a 3 8 inch threaded ready rod. 
So there's lots of different ways to uh, reinforce, but the one thing you don't want to do is you don't want to be sewing up your bobcat and have a leg break. Or you don't want to be, I think I told you the story about sewing up the big, you know, Kodiak bear and we broke a leg as we were sewing him up, putting him on his face. Um, a lot of uh, big, large, life-size mammals, we will um, actually order them without leg rods because it's way easier to alter them and it's way easier to get rods in if they don't already have rods in. So a lot of times we'll order them without rods and then we'll put our own rods in once we get them altered. Okay, so reinforce the legs and the head. Um, add a tail, if you're gonna add a tail, we like to use an artificial tail, that works really, really good. Something we never talked about yet, um, before you get to the mounting process is tuck grooves and tuck grooves, um, I call them tuck grooves, is this void up here where that skin goes way up in here. Now when you get the mannequin from the supply company, um, if his legs were closer together, this foam and this foam would be touching and then your skin won't go up there. If your skin won't go up where it does in real life, your seam won't come together on the back or the belly or wherever. So that was another thing. When I started taxidermy, I didn't know what a tuck groove was. It took me five years to figure out, you know, where to get enough skin to put my bobcat together. Now you're using our bobcat tail back here, mm -hmm. which is made out of a flexible foam. Correct. So if you come look at this, this is a bobcat tail we carry and we also have a mountain lion. Mountain lion bobcat. And it's flexible, so you can kind of pose it to however you want it to be. And there's extra wire out the end, so you can alter it as to however long you want to have it. Test fit it onto your, onto your skin, see what you need, clip off the excess wire, I mean shorten them up the other end. Um, and then that, it works really good to cut a slot out of your foam and actually bondo a loop on the wire up in there and that tail will be where it's supposed to be. It'll come off the spinal column and uh, it won't twist on you and do funny things. To have a nice sturdy tail is nice rather than just kind of like the base, getting mounted and say, what are we gonna do for a tail? Okay, uh, last week I think Amber showed you how to set eyes and the ears. So um, we got the, the eyes and the ears on. Now, I usually will do that the day ahead of time, especially the ears. And I'm gonna have to make some more of them here now. Got it, sorry. All my stuff, all my fun stuff. <laughs> uh, now, with these ears, this is critter clay. There's places to use critter clay and there's places we don't want to use critter clay. This is critter clay and then we coated it with Derma Grip high paste or any good high paste. Some people use caulk. If you use caulk, cover all of the clay with caulk. And what we're doing is we're putting kind of an acrylic flexible sheath around that clay in an attempt to keep it all together so it doesn't break apart when we take it off. Then I'm gonna cut around that. I'm gonna to try to take most of the clay with the um, ear, and that comes off just like this. Now, the idea, when it works, it works good. If you did something wrong, it might not work as good. Um, the idea is all this ear muscle is where I want it. I'm gonna glue this up into the bobcat ear skin. When we slide that skin over the head, my intention is to put that right back where it was, and if I'm careful, I can do that, and it conforms to the head. Now, the other option would be put just the ear liner in the ear skin, pack a whole bunch of clay up in there, hope you got it looking pretty good, and then once you put the head skin on, then you're gonna shape it from the outside. Um, done right, this works way better. So we'll take those off. This one I already cut. Um, now because we did that last week, we put this in the freezer, we put the whole thing in the freezer. Um, we put, a, put him in a plastic bag, and just stuck him in the freezer and everything stayed nice and soft. I took him out this morning in preparation for live tonight and um, I kind of just spritzed him with water to keep him moist. 
Did you have a towel around it in the plastic bag or just the plastic bag? Plastic bag, bag but we did um, spray them with water. Um, critter clay, once it's dry, it's real hard to get softened up again. I have been spritzing these eyes. I could wrap them with And are you plastic. using critter clay or are you using something else? Critter clay for, for this process, for the ears. Um, if you use the water-based or the um, uh, potter's clay or any of the fish clay, things like that, it'll crumble apart. You'll never get it off, glued up in, and back out. Vincent from Belgium says, thanks Matuska for the video. Okay, I'm going to set him aside for a second here. Am I in the way? All right, and make sure to like and share this video. And after you share, make sure to comment in the comment section that you have done so, um, so you can be entered for our giveaway next week. And we do have winner picked from last week's sharing that we will announce at the end, so stay tuned because we have a giveaway for that as well. Now, I think we talked about before um, how we take care of our little animals. Um, we tan this with Lutan F. The recipe is kind of common for all Lutan F. We use formic acid pickle. Some people use oxalic acid and citric acid, different acids. But um, uh, formic is something we've always used and we usually have some here and it works good. Um, doesn't matter to me if you send the bobcat to the tannery or tan them yourself. I sometimes think a tannery that's used to doing big things like milk and elk and moose and deer, they get to a little bobcat and sometimes the results aren't as good as I'd like. So I, I like to do small, intricate animals ourselves. We can flush them better. If we make a hole in them, it's our hole, not something somebody else did. Okay, um, first thing I wanna do when it comes time, and I do it before I, I modeled on the clay ears, I would test fit these. And these are um, trademark, ear, trademark ear liners made by Gary Zayner. And Gary Zayner has how many? 80? A lot. 80 or more. Um, they've got some of the, the nicest ear liners of hard to find species ever. And they're made, um, they're made right here. And they're made with a uh, thermal form plastic. It's got, it's got almost like gauze impregnated into it on both sides. Um, when we set that, we like to scuff it up a little bit. It does have a gauze texture, but when they make them, it gets warm and that, that gauze actually flows to the other side. So one side has a nice cloth texture, the other one doesn't. But we like to rough it up. Um, just use the back tip of my knife um, just to make sure I got some kind of grit for that to stick to. Okay, that, I do that before I set it in clay. That way I'm not wrecking it. Then... Um, so test fit them. Make sure that they fit your ear liner good, your ear skin good. And then make sure you don't put the wrong ear in the right sack. Okay, that one's going to go there. We'll do one at a time. Now we took the cartilage out of the ears. Um, if possible, I prefer to do that. I like to take the cartilage out. Um, it, it'll give you a thinner ear and it works real well. If you're new to taxidermy and you have not taken cartilage out of small animals, practice on deer first. When you think you got the deer, taking cartilage out of deer going good for you, then um, try it on smaller animals. Things like a fox and a bobcat, that this skin is extremely, extremely thin and you can tear them taking the cartilage out. So we want to be kind of careful. Okay, first thing I want to do, you can breathe lacquer now, right? Lacquer thinner? Yeah, I can breathe everything now. <laughs> we had to be so careful. I was, I was leaving the room quite a bit. Um, okay, anytime we tan something here, we use a tanning oil um, in addition to the um, you know, any of the recipe that we use. But I'm gonna take, uh, so there's probably some kind of tanning oil, oil on here. I'm gonna take a little bit of lacquer thinner. And I'm gonna clean that with... My stand you got here. I know. I'm just gonna clean any oils off of it. 
I got just a, I call them a junk brush. It's one of these tin disposable, disposable brushes, brushes. In the catalog. We don't call them junk brushes in nope, the catalog. No, they're not called junk brushes. High quality disposable brushes. AKA junk brushes. Um, and you can take a, you can take a wire brush if you want. Be careful because that skin is extremely thin. Now, even after they're, they're, my ear butt is built onto there, I like to take, uh, I like to test fit them also. So I did test fit this before you joined us today. Um, hand me that yellow one. Detail reference. If you're really, <laughs> in the catalog it's called the yellow one. Uh, be careful, this works good except when you show people on live TV. Um, this is a form ruffer, which, which uh, works good to kind of suede that skin. And suede and skin gives that glue something to hang on to. Now, just don't get too crazy with it because you will tear holes. I'll do one of these for the people and then you can uh, show them, You're tell good. them some things. Now, that should be, that should be, the oil should be washed off of it and with the lacquer thinner and it should be slightly roughed up so that I can glue in my ear liner. Now, I'm gonna turn it right side out. And anytime, sometimes I'll stick little tools in there to make help poke it out, just make sure you don't poke it on the end of your ear because you've been so careful up to this time. And then, um, a lot of people have done different things with ears. I know a lot of you use epoxy ear, ear material, and that works, it works just fine. We used to use epoxy for a long time. Uh, there are some disadvantages to it. One is, if it sets very fast for you, you're not able to taxi the skin back and forth, up and down the back of the ear. Um, and we use, um, we're using a, I'm gonna use a little Dermagrip. And this is just a good hide base. We use it on um, lots of our animals. Um, let's need? see, I'm gonna take this again. Now there's, I use different, glues on different spots. Derma Grip is good. It sets up overnight. Most of your, uh, most of your hide paste like um, Derma Grip or any of the name brands that the companies um, carry typically set up pretty darn good within a day. Um, you're not going to be able to taxi that skin much after a day. Now I just put this, I put some on my brush and I Worked it inside the little, I opened up the ear sack. Now I'm gonna take my ear and I'm gonna paint that with Derma Grip. I want plenty, but not so much that I don't know where to put the excess. Now when it comes to mounting the animal, um, you can use a glue like Derma Grip um, I like something slower because I want to be able to taxi that skin two or three days from now. And so there are slower hide paste that work good for that purpose for me. Now, if you get it in the hair, it'll come right out um, immediately with water. If you don't get it out today and it hardens, don't pick it out 
soften it up with a little lacquer thinner or mineral spirits. Okay, now I'm gonna find my ear sack here. Now, I'm being as careful as I can and as gentle as I can not to disturb that clay ear base. And I have a little on my fingers. I'm just gonna put a little lacquer thinner water on there and wipe them off so I don't get glue all over my hair. And now, now you see some come out. There's some little holes here that we didn't even fix because um, they were so small and you see some of that glue coming out of there, I will get that off before it sets up. Make sure to comment. Any questions you guys have during this video, comment in and we'll answer them as we go along too. Is anybody watching this thing? Yes. I got 56 right now. Oh. Looks like I'm good. And now you're gonna align. <sighs> what was that? Nothing. You're gonna align all those hair patterns. You're gonna give yourself a really nice sharp edge. Now, I think we talked about it earlier. You wanna make sure that your ears are split to the very, very edge. I'm gonna take a little hair brush. Now, whenever I, I do an animal like a bobcat or smaller animals, fox, coons, coyotes, deer even. Um, mount one ear at a time. Don't worry about the rest of the animal at this point. Make one ear look good. Then it's time to go to the other ear. And then it's time to go to the rest of the animal. But make one ear look as good as you can. You're mounting an ear, forget about the rest. You're getting lots of love right now. Todd Buchanan says he's watching. Pat Reed says he's here for you, Tom. Derek Harriman says I'm watching. John Bellucci says watching, oh, heck yes. Mr. Cat. Rick Hammond <laughs> says this is where the cool people hang out. Um, Denny Riggs says, can you explain why to use high paste with ear liners instead of epoxy? I was taught epoxy is the only thing that will truly adhere to plastic ear liners. Um, I used to always use epoxy. I used epoxy for years and years and years. And um, when, when I think Pat Wagner, Brian Olson, and those guys um, started sculpting for us, um, all of their competition gear, they used high paste. And I was not on board with that at all. I uh, thought, no. So I did a black tail for, I don't know, one of the shows. And I called Brian and I said, you really use high paste for your competition deer and he said yes I said okay I'm putting together this black tail tonight I said I'm gonna try it and I I glued it in with with that at like seven o'clock and I tore the deer apart at 11 o'clock I had no confidence in it whatsoever um, since then we've we use a lot of hide paste now hide paste um, I'm not a very good babysitter and hide paste has to, I have to come back and make sure I check that tomorrow and the next day um, now you've got this little subcutaneous little trench over here, that little bitty, that little bitty thing that hangs on the outside of your ear. It's just a, almost like a, I always called it a secondary oracle for lack of a better term, but uh, I'm going to put a little clay in there. I'm going to take from the inside, I'm going to take a little bit of clay and I'm going to put it on my little special clay inserting tool. Bamboo stick. Bamboozle. And I'm going to attempt to get it way up in there and I'll be able to shape that maybe. Hmm. When is your products in Europe? Hey, we got a lot of people. We had a Switzerland guy today. Switzerland. Christopher Barclays, mm -hmm. and he said he's ordered stuff. Okay, now I got that clay up in here, and I'm gonna squeeze it up into that little flap. 
and that that clay will hold that shape um, before I leave that tonight I'm going to shape that real nice on both the right and the left side and if you're used to um, epoxy there's nothing wrong with epoxy now the one thing that I have happen to me sometimes with epoxy is I will glue my ear liner in and all this will glue and I didn't get my skin taxi where it needs to be and now my my skin is stuck so that's that's the advantage of this okay I'm gonna just go ahead and do the other one and you can visit with them for a little bit I'd they zoomed in on that. They don't want to look at me. Don't want to listen to you? They don't want to look at me. Um, okay, I thought this was interesting. Since I've been back, I was gone for seven weeks. And since I've been back, seven I've been weeks. going through piles on my desk. And I found this one. And it started out, it's from Gary from Texas. And it started out with an email saying, Tom, you judged my pro largemouth bass at the show. And I'm like, oh, goodness, this could go one of two ways. <laughs> I know. <laughs> like that I don't have a lot of friends in the judging area. Let me tell you. <laughs> They're like, oh, Lordy. And so I keep reading, and he says, I've never emailed a supplier, but felt the need to do so on this occasion. I do this in a competitive hobby and not for full-time living. I've bought thousands of dollars worth of supplies for Mackenzie, but seeing your booth at the World Show, pretty good, huh? Don't be throwing out names. I just said the first name. Somebody mad at it. Has made me take another look at you. I always order from Mackenzie because typically receive items the next day since they have a Texas distribution. With the kindness of your staff and the ever expanding fish products you carry, I am converting all of that former Mackenzie business to your company. <laughs> That's pretty big. What the heck? I can wait I can't wait. I can wait a few more days to receive Ouch. items from you if I plan accordingly. And just as important, I just ordered one of your new shale rocks. And it's simply amazing. Whoever built these for you needs a raise. It looks exactly like real rock, and I truly am amazed at the quality of them. They do look good. So much so that even though I don't need them now, I'm about to order some more of them <laughs> just to keep in hand. Bravo, and please keep up the good work. So thanks, Gary, and welcome to the Matruska team. That was fun. But I did read it, and I was like, oh, goodness, this could be bad. I know. <laughs> uh, so we actually we're doing a giveaway so make sure you share this video at the end and then on top of that I don't know if you guys have noticed but I have been gone and since I've been gone the sales have stopped because like we haven't sold anything no like the sales for the customers for cents off because oh. Oh. you just I kind of make you I do make them noise. you're good so, I thought you meant sales period stop. No. Oh my gosh. So stay tuned to the end because we are going to announce a sale and a giveaway. But one of the things we put on, one of the things we put on Facebook um, recently was like or share your favorite product. You know, Matuska product. And it's fun because we do, we're in catalog mode now. And we're doing the 2000, getting ready for the 2020 catalog. And we already have 350 new products going in. They have not been okayed by me. I think most of them have been. Most of you guys have seen, but there's a lot. But it was really fun to see all the responses so far that we've had. So Corey Hammett says a reference book of white tails I just got and the candy in every order. It's a given. Those reference books are really nice. Rob Dallalonga, your ear liners are fantastic along with your products which that's what you're using right now. Mason Brutable says, number one, pan pastels. Number two, live videos. And number three, customer service. Mason, you need to stay tuned for later. Rocky Scoble says, next day shipping. Depends where you're at, so let's be careful with that. Larry Lampert says, two of my favorites, the mini form, detail form rougher, and it looks like that's yak, oh, the bottle caps. Bottle caps for your paint. Bottle caps are good. Yeah. Todd Blanchard says all the informative live videos. Todd's taxidermy, all the great tips in live videos. Logan says I am going with the water brushes. That's a fan favorite too lately. 
Um, Greg says everything. These are fun. Yeah. Um, Mike Steed says Corey Crothers study bills. Um, Jerry Huffaker. Okay, I like this one. We use the preserved grass. So he's talking our cover grass on almost all our habitats now. It won't crumble and break like real grass and it doesn't look like plastic when we spray our caulk water base sealer on the grass. We'll fold over and turn into clump. Great stuff. Which he, I looked him up on Facebook and he has some phenomenal, this he is a picture he shared. Fabulous bird person. If you're watching, I, to I totally <laughs> sent you a Facebook message to Jerry. That one's really neat. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he uses all the grass. So that's a cover grass he uses, which looks nice. Um, Sam McCall, great forms. Wayne Hinman says semi sneak mule deer forms. If you haven't tried our mule deer forms, um, sagebrush series, they go over well too. Derek Harriman, anything with Corey Crothers bird products, wildlife illusions, heads, and bodies. So, and he sent a picture of a nice duck. Um, Jerry says. My competition mounts have won 11 breakthrough, best of show, including two NTA, one UTA, 13 state champions, world champions. So, oh, so that's who did this. Sure. Got it. Sure, yeah. sure, sure. Um, but these are so fun. Jerry, uh, let's see. Sherry Berger Gwynn says the pine boughs and the colorful leaves. Fred Burt says the habitat and the wildlife illusions, bird products, and the pastel paint, Euro eyes, and much, much more. Um, Stephanie says your deer eyes, Gary Brunko says competitor's choice, so many fun things. So we decided, that's fun, right, to hear all that, and we're always so looking we decided, for, I don't remember being in on this decision. Yeah. It was Caitlin and I. Um, but for all those fun products, we thought we would do a comment, so if you go to our Facebook page, you're going to see this, and what we want you to do is go like our page. Comment your favorite product with a picture, just a comment. Tag a friend, and we are going to pick next week that friend to receive the product that is your favorite. Oh, that, ooh, that could be expensive. Well, what if their favorite is? We will. I'm always We're going to pick money. a good one, but it'll be All good. Right. So right, let us fun. know your favorite product and tag your friend that you want to get this product. Um, so that's. That's fun. I thought That's so. really fun. They gotta go find that. And I don't know, maybe she needs to stay home for another month, Dad. I know. I think <laughs> you were the only one that was a little hesitant of me coming back. <laughs> What's gonna happen next? It's all good. It's How good. you doing over there? I think pretty good. Um, Jacob's being pretty quiet back there. So we have our giveaway at the end. You have Oh, the reflectivized. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, you're talking about next day shipping. I just talked to someone from um, Switzerland, and they said that they get our products faster than anybody else overseas, too, which is kind of exciting. And that's with the Australian people. That's yeah. Too. Oh. Yeah, so that's kind of fun. That is fun. John Bellucci says, ooh, head forms, desk organizer, which would probably be this one, or we have a deluxe. That deluxe item is my next purchase. Yeah. I like that. Um, one double no. ended detail no. brush, some of my favorite things. These, okay. if you get one of these, super glue them together. Super glue your legs on, and you will. Oh, that's actually really Oh, yeah. yeah. Denny Riggs says mine is pan pastels and True Bond tanning products so far. Why were you gone? I did have a baby, CJ. I had a little girl, and she started daycare this week. She's adorable. Emerson. Mm -hmm. All right, family, I'm out of here. Finish up. You're doing good. See you later. Bye. Okay, now, you want nice, nice, nice sharp edges. Like that. Look how nice a sharp edge that is. My little tufts right off the end. Nice and sharp over here. I have my little flap. You're going to want to, because that's clay, you're going to want to keep an eye on that because it'll, it'll tend to... Uh, distort as you lay it on things and as as this glue whatever glue you're using um, as it sits during the mounting process um, it's going to start drying down and it's going to be stick good right now it's it's stuck to the back and make sure we talked about before 
anytime you test fit your ear, ear liner, make sure there's no trampoline type spring in it, like right here. It has to lay back to that ear liner. The ear liner has to be, has to be uh, small enough that it's not drumming across the surface. And then, look at your reference pictures. Uh, most animals have, I call them guard hairs, that come across the ear. Make sure that you arrange all of those. Um, somewhere here, I have a nice little hide. Look at that retractable. Do you still have these? Yeah, three sizes. Three sizes, uh, but it's a little probe and um, stylus, and it's very, very nice to make small little movements in your skin. It's nothing more than a, like almost like a needle. They come in three thicknesses. Retractable, keep it in your pocket. Um, you deer people would like this for adjusting. Kind of just an adjuster. That'd be a good thing to give away. David Hammond says, I just got my order and received a surprise payday candy bar. How did you know that's my favorite? <laughs> Which is funny because a lot of people don't like paydays, but in the summertime, we get the most complaints about their candy bars melting, so we switched to that kind of stuff. Now these little guard hairs, you want to taxi them so they come across the surface of the ear. Um, they protect the ear. I always say it's like a microphone on a, a camera, the foam on a camera. Um, also keeps the bugs out of their ears. Okay, now normally we're not going to have time to go much farther on this today. Um, but the next thing I will do is I will slide um, the skin over the head and uh, start positioning the ears. And then I, I like to do all of my facial work. That's the next thing that I do. Were you gonna do something with those? Yeah, because our giveaway. Oh, that's our giveaway. Not the whole thing. <laughs> We're giving away reflective eyes, and we'll let you guys, the winner, choose which species, because there's coyote, bear, wolf, cougar, leopard, bobcat, wolverine, deer, wolverine, um, all sorts of sizes, styles, and we'll let you pick, but just to show you guys, if Caitlin, you can get in there and see. Sometimes, oh, I'm sorry. Sometimes you see the reflection, and it scares people away because it's so bright, but it actually looks like a normal eye right now. And then if I take a picture with my flash on, just to show you here. So then you can kind of see if the light hits it right, it really stands out and it will show your customers. It just gives that extra wow factor. So that's our giveaway and our Winners from last week's sharing, remember to like and share this video for your chance to win next week. Um, so if these two are watching, Lawrence Chairman or Denny Riggs, if you're watching, comment in and let us know and you have a chance to win. If not, it'll go to a live viewer. Did you take a picture of your name? Yep, got it, done. John Perfect. would like to know if you placed any critter clay or sculpting epoxy under the inner ear details in order to model them. I got my inner ear detail in here. Um, actually, we talked about this last week. Um, the bottom of the cartilage, here, um, let me grab a flashlight if I can. Maybe. Denny Riggs, you were commenting earlier. Comment in and let us know you're still here. He's here. Yay. Hi, Denny. Congratulations on your eyes. Call and let us know which one you'd like to try out. Now, I don't know if you can see that down in there, but I have all of my inner ear down in there, and it looks pretty good. And that's because I didn't take that, that last three-eighths of an inch of cartilage out of there. And it's, um, I was telling the people last week, I did that in a few um, 
deer mounts that I did and I got comments like great inner ear detail and stuff like that and I didn't take the cartridge out purposely and it worked. We had a couple comments earlier about our two-week courses for 2020, what's coming out, and some people interested in taxidermy and they're learning from our videos. But we do have Northwest Iowa School of Taxidermy is our nine-week residential course um, done here in the studio. So if you are interested or just want some information, give us a call, 1-800-488-3256, and we'd be happy to tell you more about it. Um, we're still talking about two-week courses. Those aren't set up yet, but... Give us a call if you're interested in that. As far as the sale we're going to do, because I'm back and like to have sales and give back to you guys, we are doing 15% off site-wide. Some exclusions may apply. Um, and then 25% off pan pastels. So go check that out. Um, it goes through Sunday at midnight. But take advantage of that. The pan pastels... If you're even dabbling in it, I think um, Rhett said Mike Nikelski did at the NTA oh, yeah. a bird seminar with Pan Pastels and um, who else? Pan yeah, Ricky, maybe? I don't know. Somebody else did a mammal finishing. Oh my gosh. Greg Cavalier did mammal finishing. Um, so that's something that if you guys are even thinking of Pan Pastels, take advantage of the sales, try them out, and see what you think of them. But uh, give those a go. The sale goes through Sunday at midnight. And let us know. You can call in or order online and let us know what uh, we can do for you. Now, I don't necessarily want to glue this on yet because we'll be, we're going to be working on him next week. And I want to show you how to do eyes and everything else. So I put a plastic in, and my form is real rough. rough. I've sanded it, but it's still rougher than, than slick out of the package from the store so I put a plastic bag on here and now I can pull that that plastic bag was very slick and allowed the skin to go on and now I should be able to with not too much trouble I should be able to get my plastic bag out of there what are the odds this is gonna work oh it'll work I can take it either way I can go the other way or I can go this way so John says he wants to know if you paste anything under that skin. Um, I will. To paste it? To model. The, he's talking about the ear. Yes, I will. Okay. Under, not on the ear. The ear should be done. The ear should not have anything left. Uh, how come you're holding it? And then Grover Bearden wants to know if we will be getting reflective eyes for deer. We, we have them. <laughs> Three sizes, two style. Flat back and flat back and with a capsule. And the difference is the capsule is a little more expensive. It has added depth to it and a bigger pupil to show off more reflection. Um, we do, and I would, I've would never used them. I'm anxious and to see somebody use them. I've never seen pictures, and I know people have used them out there. So if you have used them and you have pictures, we would love to see them, so pass them along to us. Now if I don't cut the main off of this, You need to sharpen your scissors. I know. My ship. You have like 30 pairs laying around here, up here. And now, my ears should, should go exactly back where they were that we had them modeled on. Same over here. Then you're gonna to wanna to make sure you don't get any skin trapped underneath. And now I feel those ears went right back where they're supposed to, where they were. So that's how easy how easy the ears work. And now, had I used epoxy, here's another thing about the epoxy, is when you use epoxy, that skin gets glued onto that ear liner, up the ear liner, 
and I can't, I couldn't taxi it out, out if I wanted to right now. That skin would be stuck. David Brello says, can I get a catalog? No. Um, we are out. We are out of catalogs. So on that note, if you've requested a catalog and you haven't got one, um, you can go online. We have an online flip book that's very user friendly. It takes you right to the site if you click on something. But um, that's what you're going to have to use until my butt gets in gear and we get the catalog done, hopefully January, no, November-ish would be ideal. So we'll keep you on the list. You'll get our 2020 catalog as soon as it comes out and is finished. Otherwise, go online right now to our flip book and take advantage of that. Sorry. I know, sorry, sorry <laughs> David. Okay, now um, I will play with these ears a little bit. I'm gonna let them dry down a little bit. Um, I'll wrap this face up. I'll get my plastic out of there. Uh, wrap this face up so that it doesn't dry out on me. I may put a rag under it. Um, I will get the glue out of the ears. I have some little holes up there which I have to get the glue out of. Um, then I'm gonna um, rough in the face. Next week we'll show you how to tuck lips, shape the nose, set the eyes, do the paws. He looks beautiful. <laughs> he doesn't look beautiful now, but he's going to. This is gonna be a really nice Nice looking bobcat. Um, and those eyes will stay nice and moist. Um, there's also gonna be some clay work to be done. A little bit on the, on the cheek pad here, a little bit on the nose, a little bit on the lips. So we'll show you how to do that. And then we'll tuck the face. And something that's really important to me in doing life size like this, um, just critical, is I want I want that face to look like a really, really, really nice bobcat before I proceed with the paws, the sew and the, the tail and all that kind of stuff. And the reason for that is it's 100% psychological, but um, if I look at that face and he looks bobcat to me, um, I get excited about sewing up the rest of the legs. If he looks like he looks now, I don't think he's gonna turn out. So I sew real slow and sloppy because there's no way that's gonna look good. But if he looks, if he looks like this, when I start sewing, sewing's gonna be really, really fun. All in your head. Uh, so the next, uh, next session, we're gonna show you how to deal with this, how to do the pause. There are certain, certain spots that we need to um, anchor in certain areas. And then we're going to start sewing. And then we're going to make him look like a bobcat. Perfect. Call us with your order. Remember, 15% off site wide through Sunday, along with 25% off Pan Pastel colors. We sell a whole bunch of singles. We've added singles. So if you're looking at the catalog, there's a whole bunch more singles and kits available. So make sure to check them out on the website or ask the ladies on the phone and they'll be happy to walk you through. I think we added another six kits. So we now have the saltwater, African, open mouth, cats. That would be a good giveaway for next week, your cat pan pastel kit. Sure, 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 sure. Um, reptile, habitat. So make sure to go check those out and give us call 1-800-488-3256. And again, you're with Matuska Taxidermy Supply. So give a, us a call or visit us online at www.matuskataxidermy.com. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks we'll catch you next us. week.